the skeletal features which allow the skulls of whales to be adapted for underwater life did not appear suddenly, but instead evolved over the Eocene epoch in a series of gradual stages. As one sees the changes in uh, whale skulls from their ancestral forms, such as Pachycetus, through Rhodhocetus, through Basilosaurus, one can see that the position of the nostrils uh, moves farther up the skull from the tip of the snout in Pachycetus uh, to uh, near the eyes uh, in Basilosaurus. And in later whales, uh, this blowhole would uh, be farther uh, past the eyes on the skull. The eye position would move, as would the ears, uh, to adapt for aquatic living. Ambulocetus would lose the external ear, and after Pachycetus there would be no external ear in these whales. Uh, the Ambulocetus would begin the adaptations for underwater hearing, and Remingtonocetus was probably the first whales capable of hearing underwater as modern whales do. Uh, even the later Basilosaurids did not yet have the melon on their skull, which allows for the echolocation uh, used by modern whales. And so the adaptations for underwater life occurred over a series of gradual stages, and were still not complete in the Dorodontine whales and the Basilosaurids, which were fully aquatic whales which existed by the end of the Eocene.